This is Twit. Huawei. Or as many people call it, Huawei. <laughs> <laughs> I always love it when when we get when I hear on you know people oh this Chinese company who who <laughs> uh, Huawei uh, pres the president has signed an executive order declaring a national emergency he likes to do that uh, and prohibit I don't know why it's a national emergency but suddenly it is prohibiting U.S. companies from using telecom services that are solely owned controlled or directed by a foreign adversary. Which includes Huawei. Huawei's been in the spotlight since 2012, I think, when the Department of Commerce said, be careful with Huawei, ZTE, and Xiaomi. They're all Chinese companies. People have pointed to the ownership of Huawei. It seems no one can really be sure who owns it. Huawei says we're owned by our employees, but without without much proof and certainly well, also in Huawei's case the founder um was um in the people's liberation army so yeah. the, the 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 implication is that he still has ties to the PLA and i think also that's that's part of the story too so okay uh, I, I i go ahead and fin finish the uh, intro and then i'll jump in no 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 i mean think that's enough i think people we've been talking about this for a while uh, my yeah. position on this is I'm a little on the fence because it does seem like it's part of a political, uh, you know, it's part of the uh, Chinese tariffs, the, the kind of the political tenor. So, and we've never I, seen evidence that Huawei is doing anything. Huawei I, says we've never done anything. Show us that's the proof. exactly what I was going to say. So, you know, I mentioned the or you mentioned that we're doing the the weekend episodes now, and so last weekend I had Dexter Tillian on, who's a telecoms analyst, uh, I think in London, because I've been reading these headlines. And I'm like, so what is this Huawei? I'd never heard of them, and now all of a sudden, you know, there's a huge trade war that they're at the center of. And the three things that I learned were a like you just said, one of the reasons that other countries are not uh, willing to ban Huawei is because, and even the British and the Germans have said this apparently straight up, like if there is intelligence that Huawei is spying and is too close to the Chinese government, the United States government has not shown us that. Like maybe we'd be willing to get on board with this banning, but we haven't seen the proof. Um, and again, I, I'm not an expert in this and Dexter is more than I am. And he said, yes, as far as I know, there is no, there is no smoking gun. Now that doesn't mean if there was some sort of a conflict or a war, uh, maybe China wouldn't lean on Huawei and be like, you know, maybe shut this or that down. But then the U S has been able to do that for years. So is part of this just somebody else can do, uh, the thing that we, <laughs> it was implicit that we could always do. Uh, but the two things, aside from that, that there's there's no um, actual proof that anyone seems to know of that there are these close connections. I the second thing was is how come they how come they're the only ones basically that can do five G and they're not. There's also Ericsson does uh, it, Ericsson Nokia does it, Samsung Nokia. does it. But but the problem is number one is is Huawei by far. It, it, they're number one. They have the most five G patents. And then what happened is over the last ten years or so, um, they, like they've, it's classic. They they come in and they do it cheaper and better. So if you're Vietnam, if you're India, if you're Argentina, and you got to dial up a national five G network, not only is the company that will do it for you the best. Huawei, it's also the cheapest. So if the U.S. leans on all these other countries like they're trying to do to say, no, 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 don't use them, um, it doesn't make economic sense. And then the third thing was that, you know, I, I said, well, how come how come they're the only ones left standing? Like and, and Dexter said, well, it's like w w whatever became of Motorola. Whatever became of Lucent, Alcatel, he's like, yeah, it's just over the last 20 years, it's everything has has shifted to where while no one was paying attention, um, this Chinese company uh, came came up from below and, and can now do is the best at doing the technology that is, as everyone tells us, the key to the next generation of tech. I should also point out this is going to be a big on the other hand segment that much of huawei's 5g switching gear is software bound and so when it was just hardware you could look at it and say well this is okay it's not phoning home but once it's software there's and it's getting regular updates anything could happen 
And if you're a Chinese company, I wonder how much freedom, even if you're not owned by the Chinese government, I wonder how much freedom you have if the Chinese government came to Huawei and said, okay, we'd like you to put this in your firmware. Could they say no? Mm. But, no, I, but I, don't, I notice we don't say it's just Huawei. We don't say ZTE. We don't say uh, Xiaomi. We don't, I mean. OnePlus. OnePlus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And most of our gear is made in China. So uh, I'm sure Foxconn would have the same problem if the Chinese government said, hey. According, uh, according to Dexter, it is the, so the, the way that Huawei uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, I think that's the timeline. Um, became got off the ground is their first contract was with the PLA. So in the late eighties, early nineties, army. Yes. Uh, so when the the Chinese army says we need our own national network, telecoms network for security purposes, right? Um, it's Huawei that gets that contract and delivers. And then there have been these whispers behind the scenes that why does Huawei have apparently this access to unlimited capital in certain instances right. to win certain contracts. And so people are assuming that then sure. that's because why do you think Chinese it's so government. cheap? <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, well, the other shoe uh, dropped today because Google, according to Reuters, and this is not yet confirmed, at least not as of press time, as if we had presses, as of press time. But apparently Reuters says Google has suspended business with Huawei will no longer update Android phones made by Huawei. That's not a concern inside China because, of course, Google doesn't do business in China, so those phones are not, you know, they're open-source Android, but they're not using Google Apps. And furthermore, Huawei phones will lose Google Apps, Google services, including the Play Store and YouTube Apps. That is a big penalty. And by the way, the Huawei phones are beloved in the United States. You can't buy them, you know, from a phone company, but but people like Paul Thorat of Windows Weekly, he loves his Huawei. I was just going to make that point. I mean, the, when when uh, about a year and a half ago when uh, Huawei took the stage at CES and was, was supposed to have this great AT&T deal to announce they didn't, and then uh, Richard Yu, their consumer business group executive, sort of went off script and said, we think this is really bad because U.S. consumers don't have access to the best choice, which at the time was their Mate 10 Pro they were announcing. They were at pissed the time, because they basically were, it was rightly. the United States government that went to AT&T and said, it would be foolish of you to sell this phone, and so they right. pulled out. And AT and T exhibiting its its usual uh, I forgot what the NSA memo said it's it's uh, unusual cooperativeness or something <laughs> uh, was like oh yeah okay fine uh -huh. um, but uh, my you thing can pretty is much at the count time on them to be cooperative usually <laughs> yeah but at the time I was like well the Mate 10 Pro is 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 fine but I don't think it's the the big loss to U S consumers that Huawei said it was and then what they did over the next year was build two of the most impressive and innovative from a hardware standpoint yeah. smartphones I had ever used. And now, you know, I mean, it's the cameras from the cameras to the reverse wireless charging that we saw Samsung do to the weird material finishes. They're wonderful phones. And now to see to see this develop is really a shame because if it goes through, yeah, you won't even they won't even work if you import them or they yeah. won't work. Well, you like won't. No one Android will phone. want a, an Android phone that has no Google services on it. Exactly. That's, no. that's a non-starter. Um, yeah, these are these yeah. phones have Leica cameras in them. They have four thousand milliamp hour batteries. I have a P twenty, which I guess I won't use anymore. Even more to the point, no more security updates. It means you really, you know, this is not a phone to buy. We can't recommend this phone. But that's the other yeah. point. The this this uh, they actually haven't, as far as I can tell, brought the full hammer down yet. Where a U.S. company cannot do business. Remember, they they did that with ZTE for a while. And then dialed it back. Was it CT? Anyway. Yeah, it was. But the, forget about the software. Leo, like, like they won't be able to manufacture their phones. And and there's uh, articles that have come out about, you know, Huawei's been, been stockpiling components and stuff like that. But if they can't do business with U.S. component uh, providers, like, they can't manufacture a modern smartphone. It's almost, it's almost the reverse of what we were saying. Like, you can't do a, a 5G network without Huawei. Um, Huawei if, if says, US... in anticipation of this, they've been stockpiling American mm -hmm. parts. But uh, others are unconvinced. Uh, the head of Huawei's high silicon chip division Friday shug shrugged off concerns about disruptions to supply, saying it has long been preparing for this kind of extreme scenario. They will aim to be technologically self-reliant going, going forward. Industry experts... 
uh, say that's uh, going to be a stretch. It's hard to. Isn't that funny? You, you, if you ask somebody, what do you think the key components for the Huawei phone are? You would, where do they come from? You wouldn't say U.S., but that's what's different about the world today. It isn't just a Chinese phone. Nothing. Your car is not just a German car or, or a Japanese car. It's a global economy. So, um, you know, if there's a security issue, of, I mean, and you could certainly see that it might be prudent to say, well, let's not build our national infrastructure, particularly critical infrastructure, on products from a Chinese company that could at any point pull the plug. But then they should state that, that, that it might not be smart, not that they, you know, believe that there's something nefarious that's happening well, and I, the timing of taking such a big competitor out of the market. Isn't, though, um, that the government's job if they see a, a, a cyber, not that they do that job in other cases, but, but if they see a cyber threat, as long as it's they, not Russia. If they see a cyber threat, they should state that this is what the cyber threat is. And if it's that they think that this would just be safer, they should be honest and transparent and say, we just think this would be a better way to make sure that it's all American made so that we have control yeah. over that. The thing is saying there's a threat than giving no proof and and really creating, again, like you, you hear something enough, you believe that it's true without any proof that's kind of behind it. You That makes us you know, think twice even about what the government then tells us.